In this episode, we're taking a look at galaxies that are getting a little too close for comfort. They're not really respecting social distancing. This is a picture in a thousand words. In this episode, we're taking a look at two galaxies that are known as the mice. They're a pair of galaxies that are interacting with each other, and they're creating quite the spectacle to see. So let's dive right in. So this image was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. So it's that thing that is orbiting the Earth. We've taken a look at a lot of images that are coming from the Hubble Space Telescope as it travels around and gets some of these incredible pictures that we're taking a look at. Now, the colors from, the, from this image are a little shifted. So if you take a look at the blue here, that's actually more like green. So there's no real blue that's coming into this image. All we're seeing on the bluest end is actually the color green. What your eyes would see is green. The, there's a little bit of green, and that green's forming the white, and that green is actually more like what the red that your eyes would normally be able to see. And then finally, you can see a lot more red coming in here and that is actually infrared light. So that would be invisible to your eyes normally. And we're only getting to see it because the Hubble Space Telescope has a sensor that is looking directly at the infrared light and can see it. And so that's what we're seeing. It's all just a little bit shifted from what your eyes would normally be able to see. So these are the two galaxies. They're known as the mice. You can see like this one has a long tail. This one kind of looks like the head of a mouse. That's kind of going this way and has you know a little bit of tail. It actually looks a little bit uh, like a Pokemon uh, version of a rat, but they are called the mice because they're kind of interacting together. So these galaxies are about 300 million light years away. So that's not close. <laughs> There's nothing really I can tell you other than uh, it's far. They're very far away from us. And this is not anywhere close to us in our local universe. Uh, the image itself, this is about 1 20th of a degree in size. So a fairly small amount of a degree. But at 300 million light years, this turns into about 300 thousand light years across. Just to give you a sense, our own galaxy is about a hundred thousand light years across. So we could fit something like three Milky Ways in the space of this image. And in fact, in the background, you can see galaxies that are kind of much further away. That one might actually just be a star, but things like this, these are, you know, galaxies that are in the background that we can see behind the mice. These galaxies have a lot of matter in it. They have stars, they have gas, and they're mostly dominated by dark matter. But what that means is they have a lot of gravity. This galaxy over here is pulling towards that one, and this galaxy over here is pulling towards this one. And they're doing a little dance in space. So this one is moving sort of in this way, and this one's moving in this way, and they're interacting. And so they're spinning around one another. This one's going like that, this one's going like that, and eventually one day they will spiral into one another and make a massive galaxy, a bigger galaxy, one that's about twice the mass because both of them are about, you know, similar masses at the moment. And this is this happens quite commonly. This is what's known as a galaxy merger. And this is how galaxies grow. They basically just accrete and eat up other galaxies. And as they eat up other galaxies, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. In fact, most galaxies that we see today, they've had something like a dozen mergers that have happened to them to get to the size that they are. So all of the light that we're seeing in the galaxy, so everything that's like this and like this and like this, that's all the light from stars. Lots and lots of stars. We're talking about something like, you know, hundreds of billions of stars. And they are, that's what we're seeing. But the color of a star tells you a lot about a star. So if you have a star that is big, very, very massive, that star is more than not going to be blue. 
It's going to be incredibly blue uh, because it is much hotter and so it is producing much more energetic light and that is blue light. So you will see that as blue. The thing about blue stars is that they don't live very long. They actually die pretty quickly. And But what I mean by pretty quickly is they die sort of in of order 10 million years. So not quickly to you or me, but in terms of the cosmological scheme of things, it's actually a pretty short time. There's been many generations of these stars before. When you have a tiny star, a redder star, it will be redder. And that's because it just doesn't producing as much energy. So the light that's producing ends up being less energetic and that looks red. But these stars, they live for a very, very long time. They live for you know billions, hundreds of billions of years in some cases. And they will just stick around and there are, there are tons of them throughout the entire galaxy or throughout any given galaxy. So when we take a look at an image of a galaxy, and especially an image of a galaxy like this that's taken in optical and infrared light, the bluer areas will have bluer stars, meaning short-lived stars, and the redder areas will be the ones that don't have those blue stars anymore and are only left over with the red ones. So these areas, if you take a look over here, this and this, all of this stuff, it looks bluer to the eye. And that's because there are a lot of blue stars there and they're fairly young. Whereas if you look, take a look at these regions, these have a lot redder stars and they're much older. Uh, all the blue stars have basically died long before uh, we see the light that's coming from here. What's key to understanding this image is gravity. And it's not just the gravity that's pulling the two galaxies together, it's also what it's doing to the different parts of the galaxy. So let's say that you're over here on this galaxy and you're pulling this part of the galaxy. You're gonna feel a fairly strong force coming from this you know, number two galaxy over here because you're closer to it. But on the other side, you're gonna feel less strong of a pull. That's not going to be quite as strong because you're a little further away in galaxy one. What this effectively means is that these two things are kind of being stretched out. And this is the exact same thing that happens when the moon passes overhead and the water gets pulled up or in the opposite direction, there's a little less gravity from the moon. So the water actually has the ability to go down a little bit. And this is tides. All we're talking about here are the same thing that causes tides, except now we're talking about it at a gargantuan scale. We're talking about tides that galaxies are causing. And so what this is doing is it's stretching this out and this part of the galaxy is going to be pulled together, pulled towards the other one a little more strongly than this side. And so you have this intrinsic stretching. And as these galaxies rotate over one another, the stretching changes as the galaxies come together and different parts of the galaxy fly off because they've been pulled less or more than other parts of the galaxy. So what we're seeing here, in fact, what we're actually seeing over here are what are called tidal tails. What has happened is these stars have been stripped off of the galaxy. The stars and the gas that comes along with it have been stripped off because the galaxy has basically had some tide from the second galaxy pull it apart. So when you take a look at that tidal tail, this, you know, the tail of the mouse that we're seeing over there, it looks blue. And so what's happening is that that means stars are being born in that tail as we speak. And it's basically because all of the stars that were pulled off also had gas that came along with it. And that gas is now, because of gravity, pulling itself together and forming new baby stars and that's happening all along this entire tidal stream. And so that's why this is blue. You can see another speck of blue over here, and that's actually forming stars for a completely different reason. It's still to do with tides, but it's not just because it's been pulled apart and left there. It's actually because the tides are making the gas compress. So if there was gas in that galaxy, let's say that there's you know, this big gas cloud and you have 
the tide that is pulling this part closer to this part, what you're going to get is that this gets all compressed. And as the gas gets more and more compressed, you have new baby stars that are being born out of that gas. And so that's what we're seeing here is in one case, all the stuff that's been sent out of the galaxy because of tides, we're seeing stars being formed there. And in another case, when the gas is in the galaxy, but being pressured by the tides, that's where we're getting new stars forming there. The mice are a story of how when things seem to be collapsing and things seem to be coming to an end, it's not really all over and there might be something new that comes from it. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of A Picture in a Thousand Words. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. We just want to get some feedback of what kind of pictures you'd like to see. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to throw them in the comments. We love suggestions and we'll definitely take a look at some of them in future episodes. And your fun fact for the week is that the merger of two galaxies is really common. As I said, most galaxies actually are born this way. In fact, our own Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy are closest big galaxy are going to be doing it at some point in something like the next five billion years. And that new galaxy that forms from those two being combined, astronomers are calling it the Milk-Gromeda Galaxy. Yeah, we're not very creative. Until next time.